night here in Orlando, Florida, a finale as the UCF Knights take on Texas and the final home outing. The Knights trying to erase a five game losing streak. And by the way, Texas clinching the Big 12 standings. A look here at the three seniors that are honored here tonight, Aaron Campbell, alongside Despina Barton. Aaron, we've gotten the pleasure of watching these women play all year long. What else do they have in them tonight against number five, Texas? Yeah, it's all about playing who they are, right? Play like they play all the time that we've seen them grow throughout the season. Incredible stat lines across the board from those, especially your middles. And Lauren Clark has done a phenomenal job being a transfer on the outside. So it's going to be a really, really great night. And so get this. This is going to be the first ever matchup between Texas and UCF here in Orlando. And the only one in the Big 12, because guess what? Texas is going off to the SEC. And UCF yeah, this is the first time in the Big 12. Aaron, for you, how do they attack the approach, the Knights here, against what seems like a juggernaut in Texas? Yeah, you just play fearless. You know, Texas has clinched the conference. They've clinched their bid kind of going into uh, going into the NCAA tournament. So they're going to be trying to figure out some things schematically of what they want to do going into the tournament. But for UCF, it's all about just like, hey, what can we string together? What can we learn here? Play fearless. You have nothing to lose at this point and try to attack maybe for an at-large bid at this point. And for Texas, this is their seventh consecutive year earning the Big 12 title. They are, of course, the reigning national champions. If there are areas to expose and lessons we've learned with their, what, handful of losses, four on the season, where might there be a weakness for this team? Yeah, you know, I think it's just playing round volleyball, right? Like, try to give, you don't want to give away any errors, but it's also playing really aggressive. Play like they don't expect you to, because that's how you can sneak up on teams, right? You can go in, and if you play tough, or if you do something un really surprising, that can take a good team by surprise. I think UCF has the ability to do that. We saw K-State, you know, um, take away Texas, but one thing you'll know from Jenny Maurer's team is that this team's going to come with power, the Maurer power. So that's what you want to have kind of be your defining moment, your how this team identifies themselves to really go after it on, on the offense. And of course, Coach Jenny Maurer in her first season in the head chair for UCF. She's been around for the previous seven. On the other side, it's Jared Elliott in his 23rd year. He was tasked back in the mid early 2000s there to come and turn around the program he's done that one two national championships and for the only team in division one this program has ended each of the last 17 seasons ranked in the top 10 so i would say coach elliott has checked a lot of boxes yeah i'm just Texas is a perennial power. They are a team that will always be synonymous with extremely good volleyball. So really, really excited to see this tonight. As you see Claudia Dillon's very amateur volleyball photo coming in. I love that so much. We have one on the one side that's of her now and then one of her youth players, youth photos. What a fun environment for a senior night. And this gym is already hopping. It's a sellout crowd here inside the venue. Lots of fans digging it up. Texas taking on UCF. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And it is time to play ball. The Knights start off with the first serve. Ball handed over to Skinner. Texas resets. Phillips there, the layout by Shear. Ball out of bounds. And Molly Phillips, I think one thing, she was an on, um, honorable mention All-American last year and came into the season and really had kind of a chip on her shoulder, right? Wanted, wants to be one of the better recognized or the more recognized right sides in the nation, and she certainly made that case for herself this season. Right side attack for the Knights. Wow. The block there, Wilson flexing. And keep in mind, Texas is an incredible blocking team. UCF has had some moments of brilliance on blocking, but it's all about tracking the hitter. Great job by Wilson to track that shoulder placement, track the location of the ball, and just steps right in front of the right side attack. So Chloe Shear has a hand on it. Swindle goes tight serve. Excuse me, set. The attack from the outside. Point Texas out of bounds. No touch. So Kayleigh Akana 
the junior libero from Hawaii, transfer from Nebraska, gets the first ace of the game. And tough serving team meets tough serving team. Texas is a very dominant serve and pass team. Not many aces against. And extremely good at the service line. Will take advantage and have great location when they make those make those serves. Great set. Schomer's tight there to Dylan. Sticking with it. Armor comes from the right side. Out. And I, I just have this moment in my head. I'm thinking Ava Armor right side. I'm also thinking Aaron Campbell playing right side against Florida. So that moment, it's going to take her a little bit to get into the match. She's going to find that rhythm, figure out how she's going to swing against those blocks. But what an incredible learning moment for the freshman Ava Armour. shomer has got choices, goes with Dylan off the tap from Swindle Point Knights. And that feels good for the senior who we just recognized. And that, that does feel like the X Factor, right? If the pass is there and they can run the middle and have all three options, then they're going to be in a really good spot. They just have to make sure that the pass can lend themselves to get to the ball to their two senior middles tonight. Swindle dumps it, gets the point. Shifty move by the freshman on the other end. We're talking to a member of the Texas staff today and talking about how offensive this young freshman setter is. Just coming in, making a statement for herself, and being that uh, another offensive threat for this extremely good, efficient team. Shomers to Wilson. Big swing. Point goes down through the block in the hands of Asia O'Neill. And just being, we talked about this before the warm-up, right? Or before the match. What does a warm-up need to look like against a team like Texas? Maybe the block is a little bit taller than what you've experienced throughout the season. It's all about making sure you get the hand contact on the ball, swinging high, making sure you can get the, the feel of what a high contact ball looks like. And Emily Wilson certainly did that earlier. O'Neill, Knights recover. Back row attack, Wilson, wow. the power. Too hot to handle there for Emma Halter. Love the back row attack option. Leaves, leaves Wilson one-on-one -on -one because of the pull from Dylan. You see that just last minute juke. Great setting choice by Schomers to pull that ball around. Ball stays up high for Halter. She'll set up her partner, Winnis. And the ball will go back over to the Longhorn side. What I love about Winnis is she's just one of those players that's going to put the ball away, right? Like we talk about being kind of an L2. What does that what does that position need to look like? And she does a great job in that position, making sure she's making good contact when she's making the swing. Asia O'Neill with the bullet just over the tape line. Clark swinging away. Well, that that one's in. in. Holy moly. UCF's pit players came to play today. That block has not slowed them down at all. Just ripping that ball. That is incredibly, incredible shot. And of course, Lauren Clark here, the transfer from FGCU. Showing she's come to play. Meanwhile, out of the pipe, holy smokes, Madison Skinner. And another All-American, incredible athlete. Just times that ball perfectly well. And what's so scary about her is how much she gets on top of the ball with her arm swing and her core. That's what makes her swing so powerful. Shomers to Wilson, laying out there, halter. A free ball over. They pointed at Shomers. Spindle, back row tack coming at you once again. Madison Skinner, two for two. And so far, the connection between Swindle and Skinner is what, what as a coaching staff, you want to see from a freshman setter, right? You have that cadence. You have that comfortability. You know where exactly where to put that ball, that she can rip it nice out of the back row. So love to see that connection there. Then the freshman setter doubles down with an ace, the second here for the visiting Longhorns. Jump out to an early four-point lead here in the first set. High ball, Clark won't jump and leave her feet. Getting in place there, the block there, Hansen. Bergmark thought she had an easy one. And I think everybody on the Texas side did too, because Swindle, you know, that's a free ball opportunity. But I love to see that Hansen just steps right in front of Bergmark. He's falling away from that ball a little bit. 
A really good block, and those are the points you don't want to give away if you're UCF, right? You just had a big block, it's all this momentum's changing, and then that ball goes right into the net. You still want to be aggressive, but just go for it, you know? See how far over the net you can make it. See how close you can, you can get it to the end line. Nothing to lose at that service line. Carissa Barnes dribbling it out. The redshirt senior libero from Weather for Texas. On the opposite end, Clark attacks. Swindle pushing out to her girl. Skinner block is there. Point Knights. And that's where a freshman setter like Swindle, those, that ball came out super clean out of her hands. She actually made the play. But what happened is she trapped her setter a little bit too much. Put that ball a little bit too tight and it died way too far inside. So just a little bit of a location struggle there, but I love the athleticism from Swindle. Caitlin Grimes delivering a difficult serve. Wilson power swing, the backup there by Shear. Shomers goes Hanson, the dump. Knights keep playing. Great coverage. Watch the dump. Wilson again. Swindle with a hand on it. Phillips coming through, placed at the net. There's got to be yeah, a lot of touches, right? Yeah, it's a lift, for sure. And Jared Elliott may want to challenge this play, but as the ball comes out, I mean, it could be. Not going to challenge it. Not happy about it, though. Point UCF. So Caitlin Grimes, nicknamed Ninja, and she's got an angry serve. Now she's got an ace. Really, really getting comfortable at that service line is Caitlin Grimes. Kind of taking ownership of that backcourt has been her MO for the season, including being a really, really powerful server for the Knights. Another she great has serve. her second. The Ninja in real life black belt delivering a clinic from the service line. And it's all about stringing points together, right? As if you want to play against a team like Texas, again, number five in the country, you want to go up there and you want to be fearless. Just get after it. Another great location for that serve. She's there for the dig. Wilson stepping through for Great shot. Oh, look at the hustle. Wow. Texas able to get it over. Showmars back to Wilson. The play at the net. Longhorns reset. Big swing by uh. Phillips through the block point. Phillips in the Longhorns. And again, that's where I think Phillips has really grown into her own. She's become that player that they can put the ball away and get the kill. But incredible defense from Texas to keep that rally going. Wilson just kind of at that last second. You look at this left hand, it slaps inside. Just keep it in front of you. That block's going straight down. So Emma Holter, the sophomore libero from Indianapolis at the service line. A little out of system work here oh, for great the Knights. Shot. And they recover nicely. <laughs> Great shot, perfect shot in volleyball against a team like Texas, right? Huge, huge front line. You're seeing all six feet across those front three. So hitting off those high hands is a great way to neutralize that defense. Chloe Shear, the senior libero now for the Knights. Swindle has choices. And this, just a miscue there. Madison Skinner into the net. That location looks good. Just tried to crunch it a little bit. Maybe didn't realize how far off the net she was. So the Knights take their first lead here in the set. Trailing by four points moments ago. Ball up. Swindle gives it low and it goes right down. Asia O'Neill. And just a worker. Just an absolute worker. You know, she, the first time we've really called her name, Asia O'Neill, in this whole match, but that doesn't mean that she hasn't been effective and part of everything that's happening offensively, defensively. Love to see that she got her kill. Such an incredible volleyball player. Hana back at the service line. Shomers goes Dylan middle and the yeah. block. <laughs> O'Neill swindle doubling up. Yeah, that'll happen. So she's one of the best blockers in the world, let alone in the country or in the Big 12. So that will happen. You just got to keep swinging. And it's incredible. Asia O'Neill earned the all-time Texas blocks leader status about a week ago. She's got 551 plus, plus, plus after today. Another great shot by Wilson. But look at this relentless pursuit from Texas. Skinner, free ball over. Shomers goes middle, Dylan. And that one slips up Holzer, point UCF. 
just great heads up play by Claudia Dillon. Well, it starts with Wilson getting the free ball, but the change in direction of the attack is what I think is so great about Claudia Dillon. She got blocked going into that left back. Now she wants, to, excuse me, she got blocked going into that right back. She's going to go after that left back, even with the libero sitting there. Knights earn another freebie. Schomers, Dillon again. Oh, Akana there with the dig. It's out of bounds. But Kayle sat underneath that ball. My goodness. Just got right under it. Look at how she dug up that ball. But so much power from Claudia Dillon. Too much for the defense. Aaron, my knees are cracking after seeing Okana there. <laughs> the pass here. Skinner lines up. Elevates and nobody can touch wow. her. Madison Skinner, we know why she leads the Big 12 in kills. Like, the, the block is there. I mean, if you saw it from our angle, she literally just went, like, over it. Just completely over the block. And, you know, Schomer is not the tallest player on the court, but has done a great job blocking the ball. But, wow, what a swing. And the hang time, Aaron. That was incredible. Schomer's Wilson, block goes down. Oh, O'Neal. If you recognize the name, look how high we talked about. I mean, it's just over, over the block. So you're going to give that away. <laughs> With that O'Neal block, it's going to be a time into this contest today. They were turned away at the gate saying it was sold out, then tried to go online and buy tickets. Over $80 here to get inside to see this big matchup between UCF and Texas. Oh, great play. Went on the slide, oh! O'Neal blocked Wilson and the Knights outworking Texas. Wow. Wow. Kudos to Shear who chased that ball all the way to Europe and back. And then Wilson for just being relentless and getting back in there and making that stuff block. Incredible volleyball. And then Wilson's got to back, go back and serve. So Wilson, one of the top servers in the Big 12. Swindle goes back row, and that has been so solid. The connection back to Madison Skinner. Well, and it's scary because there are so many different offenses on, there's so many different offensive options on Texas as we watch Chloe Shear just absolutely sprint. What is that 40 time? Are we tracking that? Because that's incredible. And then for Wilson to get back in. But it's so hard to play defense against Texas because you're thinking, oh, they're going to go to Asia O'Neal. They have a perfect pass. And then here comes Skinner out of the back row. Dylan delivers one right back at you. And we've got quite a volley going here. And again, mixing up her shots, right? Doesn't go to the same spot every time. Doesn't have the same approach every time. Is able to, to bring something different every time she's swinging on the ball. So no, oh, now on the that. right side, the block right at Clark and Hansen. And that's great communication on the front row for UCF. They are calling that out that, hey, the right side, there isn't a right side. So we have, they are, if they set that ball back, it's going to be a back row attack. If she's going forward, she's going to make that play. So great job by Hanson to read that. And Swindle, this Ella Swindle is a true freshman from Columbia. And she has found two quick ways to convert and get her team out of trouble. Yeah. Again, talking so much about her, her offensive prowess. And as a 5-1 freshman, you have to be that. Or, excuse me. 6-3. 6-3. <laughs> <laughs> Running a 5-1. That's what I mean. <laughs> She's not 5-1. <laughs> she is quite opposite of that. Uh, but Abby Schomer is making a great play. Not just trying to go for the easy middle-middle. The tendency of a setter just to do that, to find the, the deep spot on the court. Setter v. Setter. Swindle close to the net. The joust put down by Clark. Ooh. The pass over, through, and the point works. Not conventional, but Jenna Winnis takes advantage of the situation. Great job by Texas. Just playing great out of system. They're not out of system a lot, but the one thing they do is control chaos when it happens, right? It's very, very calm on their side when something doesn't go according to the game plan. And that's why they're just such a fantastic team. Carissa Barnes from the service line laying out Wilson. Clark, welcome back to the contest. Oh, hey, Skinner and Bergmark had your number. I mean, it's tough. Not only is Madison Skinner 6'2", but look at this reach above the net. I mean, that's just, that's, a, look at this 
press. I mean, not even didn't even have a chance. There's no daylight there. No daylight. So can't go right at that block. You have to try to do something with it. It's a one-point game here in set number one. Number five, Texas taking on UCF, and it's the Knights and head coach Jenny Maurer that calls a timeout. Aaron, what do you suspect is being said in these two huddles? So for Texas, it's all they're both talking about game plan and scheme, right? Okay, so we are in X rotation. What are we going to do offensively? What are some of the ways we can score easy points, get a first ball kill if you're UCF, right? You're in rotation once. You've had inconsistent efficiency in this specific rotation. So what are you going to do? How are you going to mix it up? You're, you're split right now with Lauren Clark on the right side. Do you, do you stack and put all three on the left side? Just kind of coming up with those schemes. For Texas right now, we can see that there's, there's some setter conversation happening over here. Okay, what are some of the setting choices we can make that's going to pull us away farther from it? And then both teams are obviously talking schematics and how they can better produce offensively and be great on defense as well. It's senior night here in Orlando, Florida. Aaron Campbell, Despina Barton. The Knights in Texas going toe-to-toe -to -toe for the first and only time in Big 12 action. They've played three previous times, and Texas has owned each one of those contests. The Knights on a five-match losing streak. Four of those to top 25 opponents. They opened up the Big 12 on a 7-0 run, but it's been a struggle since then. So they did end up stacking. So now Lauren Clark is on the left side. You have Armour and Hanson all over here. So if you're Texas, you're probably going to serve short or two Clark. Shomers gets it up to Clark. Pushed out of bounds too much. And it's crazy how quickly breakdowns in passing can make the match feel out of reach now, right? I mean, it's it's not, but you get that sense against a team like Texas. It's going to be really hard to score and battle back at this close to 25. Clark comes swinging, laying out on the other end, Longhorns, and the cover there. Halter to Skinner and can't be tracked down. And it's hard to play against Skinner, right? Because if the block is set, she's going to swing high hand. So as a defense, you want to go and be kind of outside of what your normal perimeter is. But if there's even a small seam in that block, she's going to crunch it. So you want to sit into the seam and make the, the good dig sitting in there and getting gritty. So as a blocking system and as a defensive system, UCF just has to be able to read kind of what's happening in real time on that block. And so two quick points by Texas and another timeout called here on the floor. Just as you were saying, Aaron, you could feel it kind of get away from you. For the Knights, they know how pivotal this moment is. We told you how good Madison Skinner is, and I know you've been watching her for yourself here, but this is how she shapes up in the Big 12. She is leading the conference and kills per set and just really fo forces other teams to make really difficult decisions as far as their adjustments go. And, yeah, and what I love about this team of Texas is that they have so many different options that Madison Skinner doesn't have to carry the pressure of being the only outside, of the player that has to hit a 1,000, that has to do all of this. So it allows her to play really free and be, and when she plays free, she's at her best, right? So that's the beauty of this well-rounded six six-player team that Texas has built and Jarrett Elliott continues to build as part of his program. And the junior from Katy, Texas transferred in from Kentucky. You know, when she plays well, this team plays really, really exceptionally. Texas, obviously the defending national champions, have beaten 10 top 25 teams this season. And of course, Wednesday night, Coach Elliott and his team clinched their seventh straight Big 12 Volleyball Championship. So they've got their bid. They're going to the postseason. They're defending their title. And here they want to rip away a closing sentiment against the Knights in their only Big 12 matchup. Skinner front row again. That shot we saw her try in warm-ups. 
unable to keep it in play. Yeah, and I don't know if it's a 32, if it's like a, a play by design that's set inside, but it looks like that ball's almost set. It's dying a little bit too soon on Skinner, especially when a player like that, where they have so much athletic ability, get it out to the pin, let her use all of that frame to go up there and get that ball. Swindle outside Just again, like Skinner, and look, she splits the defenders. And again, I mean, Ava Armour is 6'5". Six, six okay, so let's let's take a moment to, to get kind of the, our bearings there. Big block in front of her still has just so much athleticism goes over it. That's why I'm saying just leave the ball up there a little bit for her. Let her leap to it and get her feet to the ball so she can make that good play. And O'Neal, right place, right time. The put down just at the free ball. Asia O'Neal, by the way, the daughter of six-time NBA All-Star Jermaine O'Neal. But she has made a name for herself here at Texas, the senior middle blocker, all-time blocks leader. And hitting there, the error and the antenna. And so now we're at set point. Emma Halter, sophomore libero from Indianapolis. Was a DS last year, powerful serve. Hansen lives another day for the night. And a much needed end of that, that kind of ugly run for UCF. Just a little bit of finally getting some good passes, not getting the sets you want. So it's kind of like what was so brilliant about UCF so early on in this set was that everything was working, right? They had the good pass. There wasn't any doubt in the, in the scheme that they wanted to run. So getting back to that will be really critical. Chloe Shear into the net. And that's how the first set comes to a close. The Knights on an error and Texas comes out 25 and 20 off the arm of Madison Skinner. Much more volleyball ahead. We'll be right back with set number two. A jam-packed arena here in Orlando, Florida, catching Texas taking on UCF here in the Big 12. And it is the visiting Longhorns and reigning national champions that took the first set 25-20. Aaron Campbell alongside Despina Barton. A quick look at the stats here through set number one. Aaron, for you, what stands out? What adjustments does this kind of point to here for the Knights in the second set? Well, they're really limiting an Texas offense, which is phenomenal. And I'd, I'd beg to argue, or I'd argue that the reason why UCF actually, that hitting percentage dropped down so much was from those last few points. They were hitting neck, neck and neck, kill for kill with Texas leading up into the last like six or seven points. So I'd expect that that's kind of where all those errors came from. But how do you do it when you play against somebody like Madison Skinner, right? How do you come back and battle against one of the best players in the country when she's finally finding her groove? Completely out of the back row, we saw just absolute domination. And then those few swings in the front row where the set was where she needed it to be, got her feet to the ball, used all of that leaping ability. That's tough to stop. So what do you do to counterbalance that? You let her get her kills, but you have to be able to respond everywhere else on the court. Otherwise, it's just so tough to play against a team like Texas and a player like Madison Skinner. And I don't think, Aaron, I've seen a player like Skinner here in this gym this year. The speed in which the rate that she moves that ball, it's you get whiplash. Yeah, and, and then that's what makes her so scary. Then you add in this, her already high, her height. You add in her jumping ability. You add in her mechanics and fundamentals to the arm swing, which also helps with that power and generating all that power. That's why she is one of the, the best players in the country. You know, she was a third team All-American last year, but absolutely in the conversation for first or second team. I mean, just an incredible, incredible athlete. Look at the leadership. You know, it's not even just, hey, I, I'm here to play. It's here, I'm here to lead. And, and that's what you want from an outside, somebody that tends to kind of quote unquote get in trouble with some of this the attacks and sets just takes it all on her shoulders but has the ability to kind of defer because of the amazing athlete she has on her team so madison skinner and company here from texas will look to keep ucf at bay while because jenny mauer here is still reviewing some tape up until a few seconds ago Reviewing the stat sheet, wanting to make some adjustments here. And the Longhorns, Carissa Barnes will pick up serving duties here. The redshirt senior, one of five 
for the Longhorns that will graduate. Bell Good, third ace of the game. This is a pickup to a transfer from AM Corpus Christi for the Longhorns. Knight's gonna touch there at the net, so the point will go UCF. And Ava Armour needed that one, right? Had a few errors in that first set, just needed something to work out, got the touch off the block, keep using all of that height to get the swing. Now, now can be part of that conversation at the net. And another service error for the Knights. Sherry overcompensating for that first set error at the end. Going a little bit too long this time. And the halter. Bullet Shomers tracks it down. Lining up there, Wilson. Halter. Up front row to Skinner. Oh, what a Finding shot. the corner. Grimes can't get to it. So if you're a volleyball player, aspiring volleyball player, coach, just the technique and the technicality of that swing. Just put that on repeat. Watch everything that happens in that. She goes up there, keeps that chest nice and high, keeps that arm across the body for that line shot. Per perfect technique. Wow, what a play on defense. My goodness. Relentlessness here, and Dylan sticking with it, gets it through the block this time. But Texas is so good that it like doesn't surprise them. They're all like, oh my gosh. It's just like, oh yeah, that's what we do. But great job by Dylan to make the play, beat that block. Really, really fun contest we're seeing at the net between Dylan and O'Neill. O'Neill, Armour gets under it for the dig. Wilson Great has a look set. at it and gets it. Great set by Shomers. Look at this hip turn. See how that she turns that hip at the last second? That's what's going to get that ball in that location. Emily Wilson's been chomping at the bit to get those swings back going, so love to see she puts that ball down the line. And that here getting in the way of the Longhorns. And I want to go ahead and say that's going to count for armor. No, not an ace, but a point for the Knights. Eva Armour, also a true freshman here. So oh, great five. And another little miscue here oh. off the hands of Molly Phillips. I thought that was a great set by Swindle. Maybe the Phillips went a little bit too soon, didn't see where the set was before making the approach, but maybe the expectation is that ball is a little bit tired from the net. I thought that was actually a great set of choice by Swindle. There it is. Swindle gives it back, and there's the point. So it's tempo. The difference between those two where it caught Phillips a little bit off was this tempo out of the hands with Swindle. That, that difference in just how quickly it comes out of her hands was what Swindle was, excuse me, what Phillips was looking for on that first attack and was able to, to make the difference there and make the swing. So Kaylee Akana, the junior libero from Hawaii, back at the service line. Shomers has options. Wilson's the target. Wendell to Skinner. Oh, Dunzo! <laughs> it's just unreal. Like, I'm sorry. I, I'm like stars in my eyes. And I'm trying to be professional, but that's incredible. Like, that's incredible. You know that, right? Like, that's an Olympian. That's... That's somebody that wins gold medal in the Olympics, that athleticism, that power, all of that technique. And it's just a beautiful swing in one of the most vulnerable spots on the court. There's no defense designed to play there. And she attacks it like it's like it's nothing. And so rotation here off the service error from the Longhorns. And Emily Wilson, one of the best surfers in the Big 12, will pick things up. Wilson from Estero, Florida, a transfer from San Diego. And just off her mark. You keeping tallies today, Aaron? No, but I'm also like, like that one doesn't make me get gray hair, right? Yeah. Because it's, it's going after a spot. There's an intention behind that. There is, there, you're going line to line. You're trying to make it as hard as the passer. You're making her make that decision. It's almost like you're, you accept those a little bit. It's the in the nets and the blatantly outs that drive you nuts. Ooh, right off the tip, Skinner making things a little difficult. Ooh. And Dylan says, hold my beverage. And great pull from Wilson out of the back row. Just delays Asia O'Neill. 
to get out to the pin leaves Dylan one on one, and you don't want to do that. She is lethal out there on that right side on that slide. So we go. Right side feed. Big swing there by Daniel. Watch a dump. Schomers picks it up. Clark swinging. Out of bounds. A great defensive stance by Texas, right? It has to deal with the scramble, doesn't get panicked, just gets to their base, makes good movement, gets all the way out to the pin. It's just quiet, right? It's, it's so quiet. O'Neal with a bullet. Schomers feeds the right side. Little Luther Skilter. Schomers back to Wilson. Oh, great spot. Changes oh. up the speed. And squaring up, swinging and delivering to the open court. There is Wentz. You look back at Emily Wilson, Ava Armour. I mean, they're just smiling like, how do you make that play? And it's just this really, really good awareness of the last two steps of your approach, right? If that ball is hanging high, it's all about being patient. Those last two steps are what's so important about getting that leaping ability, which Texas does so well. Just very, very patient on the attack. In the middle activation here, getting the ball to Hansen. And Schomers and Hansen are getting a lot better at the net of reading, of not going like one on, like to the same spot every time, right? They're mixing it up, going pin to pin, trying to find kind of those seams within the block, make both blockers move. The seams will happen if you make that play, make that call. So a late set there to win this, and it goes through the block. The junior from Frisco, Texas, with a couple of points here in the second set. Now Ella Swindle, the freshman setter, who's had the duty in the starting role all year long. It's been a crash course in running a 5-1 off a national championship team. As a freshman. As a freshman. I mean, so that on its own is just incredible. The ability to come in and be that player, but then also to be able to, to add in just great setting choice and great setting calls. And yeah, maybe some, some off targets, but overall the brilliance of it is there. Winnis elevating, and the Knights kind of have a little bit of cement in their feet. And it's just a great play. Really, Texas is really starting to go after the pin, and you know, if you wanted to score some points, you'd, you'd think you'd want to do it with Skinner in the back row, but here she comes again. She's back in the front row. Tough rotation at the front line for Texas. Oh, Schomers tries to save it. The call on here. The back row block. Or they're calling over the net. Okay. So, Schomers was trying to make the set. The Texas attacker made the play. Jared Elliott's not happy about it. So, basically, if the setter's making a setting action and the ball's on her side of the plane of the net, then she can make that play. But if it's over the net, then technically Texas can make that play. I don't know if, it, if, that's, a challengeable, if that's a challengeable call. Jared Elliott certainly not happy about that call. It's saying it's two calls now that he's upset with. First was the lift in the first set. And now this one at the net. And, you know, the camera angle could could have an impact on kind of what the position of that is. Wow, look at that hustle. But it's a great way for UCF to just come in and say, hey, all right, let the ball never lies. We're just going to go after it, make the play. The frustration still for Elliott on the other side. Shear will go at it again, the senior libero. Skinner. Wow, what a Wilson. shot. My goodness. And no one can get to the ball fast enough. Out of system on the tee of the 10-foot line. And just incredible athleticism. That's just good ball control. Understanding what you have to do to use your hand to manipulate the angle of the ball. Such an incredible athlete. Great job by UCF to, to be sound and play some defense around it, though. Wilson, Halter keeps the ball high. Skinner gets it low, changes up the speed. Schomer's middle to Dillon. Swindle goes middle herself. 
Oh, he won't get out of the way for Wilson. Block comes down. No one ready for it. O'Neal. Don't want to make it easy for, easy for Asia O'Neal. Great defense by UCF, but you've got to be able to go away from one of the best blockers in the country. Try, you know, you're not going to go off her hands, try to go around her, use her as a tool, go completely off the, the inside hand, something to make that work. And the third service error here for the Longhorns. 12 all, the second set's been tick for tack. Armour raising the net, the net there and elevating oh. what a layout by Grimes, but a kill, Skinner. Great read by Grimes, there's just so much power on that ball, can't make the play with one hand. You have to be able to kind of take some of the heat off, but I love the read by Grimes. You know, we've talked a lot about how UCF's defense has come a long way throughout the course of the season, and it's mostly due to what Grimes has done, that grittiness for sitting back there and playing good defense. Shomers to Ava Armour. Back row attack. Joust at the net. Longhorns keep the ball up. Skinner. Tough one. Watches oh, it go in. And wow. the Knights <laughs> celebrate this one. I mean, two players from Texas watched it. They thought that ball was going out. Great job by Wilson. That ball is definitely in. I mean, Wilson maybe may have uh, had an influence on calling that ball a little bit, but great heads up play. She's playing good defense. And now she gets to serve. And an ace. How about that? Emily Wilson in the Knights will look to try and build a cushion. She is the leader in the conference in serves for a reason, right? She just has this ability to put that ball so high off the floor, or excuse me, so deep into the court, and then it just drops. It's hard for players to play defense, right? You can move forward to make a play with the ball, but it's moving backward that you have to, you have to think about it so much more, and that's what she does. She just really trips up some of the best passers in the country. You look at the East leaders in the conference. Ava Armour there in the top five as well. And Skinner as well. So high risk, high reward. The Knights with their fifth service error here this evening or afternoon. It's a matinee game here in Orlando, Florida. And you're looking at Madison Skinner, the junior outside hitter from Katy, Texas, a transfer from Kentucky who leads the conference and kills per set. Joust at the net. Schomer's unafraid with O'Neal. The push out to Clark. And catches the Longhorns on their heels. And needed that from Clark, right? Needed that kind of confidence building from her on the pin. And so Coach Mauer's crew has a one-point lead, and we have a timeout on the floor. We'll take a break, too. Aaron Campbell alongside Despina Barton. The finale here at home, senior night. And Wenis will get it off the block. And Wenis just needed that one, too, right? Like, really just had a few of the sets, maybe not be in the location she wanted or wasn't making the right read, but is so powerful on the outside. 6-1 outside from Frisco, Texas, just ripping that ball. O'Neal from the service line. Schomers tries to dump. On their end. Oh, great set. The push out to Clark on the floor there, Skinner. Witness the block comes oh. back at the Longhorns. Ball alive and the put down by Hansen. And great heads up play by Texas, but Hansen one of the things that you want out of a fifth year senior is somebody that just understands volleyball, net presence, right? When to stay, when to make the read, when to back off, and that's Hanson. That's probably one of her best skills, just being able to read what's happening on the defense or on the offense of the other side. Swindle, Winnis over the block, ever so gently. And that's just a total read. Warren Clark is bailing in, sees the tip, tries to go behind the setter. Wenis changes the direction at the last second to basically go where Lauren Clark just came from. And that's why you always tell your attackers, look at the, what the block's doing. Look at what the defense is doing before you take a swing, because things can change how you swing at the ball. And that one counts as an ace for the Longhorns.
Coach Elliott on his feet in his 23rd season here for the Longhorns. Two national championships, 2012 and 2022. He's known as one of the best recruiters in the nation. Clark got a little too excited there. And maybe expecting hands to be there, but again, you have to check what the block's doing. You have to see what the block's doing in front of you. The block was late. You actually had the swing you wanted, but you overthought it, right? That's the, that's the trouble with big blocks, is they make you think too much. Clark trying to rewind that in her mind as well. And Hansen, a little extra explainer. So a timeout here on the floor. Texas up by two, 18-16. And we're going to show you what Claudia Dillon's been up to here today for the Knights, the middle blocker, and her senior night against the Texas Longhorns. Obviously does a phenomenal job on defense. And, you know, they don't expect, they don't want, they don't need her to block as much as she normally does. But what they need her to do is produce offensively, hitting 500 right now on senior night with six kills. And they've come at really, really important times for this team. Haven't really had to go to her a lot in this second set, but I expect when she gets into that front three and the pass is there, they're going to want to get her the ball. I will say Claudia Dillon has been one of my favorite players to cover these last few years for the Knights. And in fact, she was a true catalyst when Coach Jenny Maurer took over the reins for Todd Dagenet here in the off season. And she was the glue in helping to keep this team together and even recruit some new friends to come play for the Knights. A true believer in the program here and, and just a superstar uh, captain for the Knights. Also a badminton state champion. I mean, these women on the floor, Aaron, are so talented. And I know you, you too. You were the in their shoes. You were the outside, Aaron Campbell. You know, we're talking from the rep from Texas, and he's sitting here talking about how never have they worked with players that are so multifaceted and have so much as part of who they are. It's it's not just that this is their identity. There's so much to them, and that's just that's both sides of the net, right? All of these players, all of these women have incredible, incredible skill sets and are more than just volleyball. This is just part of who they are, which is incredible. I think early on, too, might have heard that you, know, you can only be one dimensional, right? But that yeah. is not the no. case. You don't want to be, right? Like, think about the footwork you get from playing soccer or basketball and how that translates here. The jumping ability and track and field, the, the speed to which you need to move laterally, left and right, in some of these other athletics and sports. And it's just, the more you can add and train, the better off you'll be. This cue here between Schomers and Wilson in Texas. And it's tough because now Lauren Clark's kind of airing herself out. Schomers is now thinking, well, can I can I set the ball to her? And then it trips her up too. So it's, I know Lauren Clark has it. It's just maybe some, some miscue on the volleyball contact. But want to make sure you can run with every option you have. And again, another set that's behind the attacker. Just some miscommunication between Schomers and her front three. The Longhorns build a lead here. Set number two, and the timeout called again. Coach Maurer in UCF. And so it almost feels like, Aaron, a little bit of deja vu, right? First set, both teams playing point for point. And then the separation happens here in what we'll call the red zone, right, after 20. What do you suspect? coach is going to ask of her team. And, and by the way, I think we have some famous superstars here in the room. Yeah, Former Marie UCF Watson. Knight alums to come support on senior night. Um, but yes, for you, for the Knights to kind of rectify what they learned in the first set, what happens? Airing them. I mean, it, it's the it's the struggle that good teams have against great teams, and it's airing yourself out, overthinking it, not going and being aggressive, and it, it tends to happen. As you see, McKenna Melville, UCF all-time kills leader, up there as well. A lot of alumni here today. Jordan Pingle, the women's basketball program in the house. Night Nation representing sellout crowd here inside the venue in Orlando, Florida. 
can't get a ticket unless you're paying over 80 bucks online to get inside. Where you know people like the women's basketball team, they're coming in, they're seeing what's happening, the energy of this place, and they're gonna be rocking, rocking the arena right next to us here shortly. So out of the timeout, we get to see Ella Swindle. Once again, the freshman setter for the Longhorns continue to do work from the service line. Feet up front row there from Skinner. Clark on the opposite end. That one feels good. Great defensive stance by Texas. Skinner coming in, making the contact, but a great great transition win for UCF, something they really, really needed on the right side. So Caitlin Grimes. The assailant, the block there from Hansen, giving it back to Skinner. And Hansen got burned a few times in that first set on that play, using that Bick as a true option when Swindle has some trouble. So great job for Hansen, again, her best skill is sitting in there and reading what's happening on defense or on offense. She gets the block out of that one. Calling for Halter, sets up witness. The block again, Hansen, the flex. Great serve by Grimes, sets up an out of system play, becomes one dimensional, then Hansen can go out there and make the block. That's why volleyball is such a true team sport. If all of these things come together, it makes the game easy, right? Predictable, you're able to make those reads. That's what is so great about this UCF team and Texas. Both of them understand the importance of every facet of this sport. We talk about a game of swings, right? We saw Texas a few moments ago. Now UCF out of the last time out here. Coach Jared Elliott wants to talk things over. His team coming in ranked fifth in the nation. Of course, they are the reigning national champions from a season ago. We'll have a star power on this team. They'll be going to the SEC next year. And Wednesday night, they clinched their seventh straight Big 12 Volleyball Championship, which, right, the business is done, Aaron. How, how do you come into UCF? This is the first time they're here. And keep your mind on putting this, this team to rest because it is still Big 12 play, right? Yeah, but absolutely. You've, you've kind of already taken care of, of what you needed to. Yeah, but not really. Like, if you're a competitor like Jared Elliott and talk Asia O'Neill and Madison Skinner, like, the business is now just getting started. The season is just now getting started, right? When you really think about what they have ahead of them when it comes to the NCAA tournament. I think that this is arguably the best volleyball year I've ever seen. So much talent across the board. So this is the jump start for that. So what do you do here? You want to take care of business. You want to get that comfortability. You want to make sure that everybody's healthy, playing at their best. So you go into the NCAA tournament and the, the you know, remainder of the conference if there are any more matches to then like build up some of that momentum to get going. Caitlin Grimes, the junior. DS from the service line. Already has two aces here tonight. Oh, campfire. Wow, and Minnis again able to place the ball over that block. But that is a, a defendable ball, and UCF just stopped, right? Oh, you, me, you, you, you know, Spider-Man out pointing at each other. You've got to be able to make that play, especially when a player like Winnis kind of gives you that ball, right? Yes, it's a great heads-up play. She understood that the defense was, was all back on their heels, but you have to be able to convert that play. Wilson back in the front row. Oh, look at that dig location. Alter's been that nice secondary passer. Tracked down by Barnes. Swindle to Skinner. Wow, laying out Grimes. Oh. Off the fingertips and a lucky roll. The Knights get the point off the hand of Emily Wilson. And Emily Wilson has been sitting in that zone to make that huge cross-court shot from Skinner. This photographer's in the way of a of this guy making this sweat. He's got to, she's got to get all the way down here. We've got some sweat on the court. These girls are playing, or women are playing tough. All right, game 
game on. Chloe Shear now, senior from Marietta, California. Service line error. Goodness, those have been compounding for her here. Yeah. She does it, yeah. Uncharacteristic. It's so frustrating. You're like, oh, I thought I got it, though. Like, I thought I touched it right. Walter, tough serve over from the Longhorn. Shomers tracks it down. Same motion here. Swindle to Skinner. And goodness gracious, no one's been able to stop her here today. And it's tough because defensively, Grimes and Shear are in the correct spot. They are reading the, the perimeter correctly. It's just that Skinner has the ability to hit over the block into those zones where the defense isn't set up with power. And Texas giving away a point there Shear at, that, at set point. Went right past her nose that she made the right call. So set point still. Ava Armour, the six foot five freshman. Pass into the net. Ball gets up by Swindle. Freebie comes over. Shomers has choices. Dylan through the block. A stellar showing here on senior night. Armor over. Oh, great get. Skinner front row attack. Where's the ball? It's in. And that goes ahead and seals set number two. The Longhorns take it 25 22. A little bit closer this go around. But regardless, the number five Longhorns head into set number three with the two set advantage. He played the game and he has such a great staff with Eric Sullivan, David Hunt. Christy LaRue, a lot of these, the staff is incredible to help him run the match like he needs them to. And the Knights and Caitlin Grimes start with a service error for UCF now. That is at seven, seven service errors for UCF as Halter. It returns the favor. <laughs> so the Texas bench getting excited after that first service error from Grimes and then quickly quiets down from the service error from Emma Halter. Is that what Taylor Swift would call combo? <laughs> oh, geez, geez Louise. Just like three, three gray hairs sprung from my head. Just kills you. You want to get something going, you know, you can't give away points. Louis Shear, more frustrated with her serving game, but has done a phenomenal job playing good defense. So, so Kayle Akana, can you break the cycle? She does. Wilson, back to action. Point nine. Wilson leading in the passing game and in the kills game for UCF. And was pretty quiet in that second set. Give her the ball early in this one. This really goes after that block. This is a good matchup for her against Asia O'Neill on that, that middle. She's back in the front row. <laughs> if you needed any introduction, Madison Skinner sending that one to the rafters. About 90 miles an hour coming off her hand, about 110 as it hits off the defender sheer and into the stands. So much power. Great job by Shear to just try to get something, some kind of touch on it. So the junior from Katy, Texas now will serve it up. Really just as stiff as her strike. Tracking the ball that was Holter laying out. It doesn't always have to be pretty. It can just be in. And all against a triple block, you know. Ava Armour just really getting a lesson early. I love that. I love that that's the option there, even against a triple block from Texas. Wilson, a little softball over. Swindle's got choices. She's going back row. Skinner, slicing and dicing. And the bench is alive and well for Texas right now. This is a, a very loud gym if you are a UCF Knight, but the Texas bench is rivalry. Is is really, really coming alive here. Ooh, I think we got some instigators in the stands. Jamming Knights, make it fun. 
Wendell has options. She dumps it with the left. Wow, a little ambidextrous action. And the key to UCF staying in these matches or in these sets so far has been to come out really with a stance, right? With a posture. Seeing a little bit of a breakdown there for the Knights, but that's what Texas does. That's exactly what they do to teams to frustrate them. So Texas with a service error here off the hands of Asia O'Neill. And Claudia Dillon, the senior that's been absolutely stellar here. Oh, jump serve it up and oh. nearly gets robbed from an ace. Shomers, Hansen connects oh off the gosh, slide. Ball stays high. Longhorns getting ready to attack. Clark. Akana keeps the ball high. Pushed out. The slam there from Winnis. Knights track it. Will she get it back? Flying from outer space. Skinner, she's got 15 kills here tonight. And it's a great defensive stance from UCF, but it's just a clinic for Texas. We go here, we get the free ball. We go here, we get the free ball. We go here, I mean, every option in that front row or in this Texas offense got a hand on that play. But again, good defense by UCF to hang in there. Clark swinging away. And a whistle against the Longhorns. Phillips in the net, so good point for UCF. Good swing, too, from Warren Clark. First ball kill situation for UCF. Definitely want to make sure you play good defense around this ball. This is a good rotation if you're UCF. Swindle, feet on the right side. Shear keeps the ball up to her setter. Clark laying out Swindle. Big swing from the Longhorns. And that was the third attempt for Jenna Winnis, and this one actually resulting in a point. And Skinner comes into the front row again. So for UCF, this is a really critical first ball kill situation, right? You want to make sure you limit the amount of time Skinner can or will swing on the ball. And Phillips just surprises you, right? Everybody in that front line for Texas knows what to do. And it's just the communication between her and her middle and Bergmark, right? They're talking, they're having that conversation. That ball's a free ball pass. Hey, I've got that, that's in my zone. I'm coming in, I'm making that play. So much conversation happening. A great swing by Ava Armour, Armour on the first ball kill. Tight squad not backing down. Another look at Ava Armour's swing. People in the stands are dying to touch this ball. I love it so much. Everybody is clamoring to get a touch on this, this match. I mean, what a historic match for UCF and Texas playing together the one time in Big 12 history they'll ever face each other. It's been a great match so far. And though Texas took the first two sets, they were very, very close. The first one 25-20, the second 25-22. It's been a tug of war here on this Saturday edition of Big 12 Volleyball. And how about another ace for the Longhorns? And it's tough. UCF, we know kind of where their pass goes, they go, right? So there's got to be a concerted effort into making sure there's a lot of grit at that serve-receive line to make those plays. All right, and Coach Mauer here. One action here in the venue. Knights trail by four. Armour gets the first sweep. Swindle kicking it out to Skinner block there. And the whistle on point goes UCF as O'Neill has a little chagrin. Aaron Mauer's happy on that one too because there were, could have been another double contact in that rally, but is happy to get that play. Ball has to be coming out of the hand, the hands very clean. There have been a, a few plays where the up official has let them play, which I always enjoy. Swindle O'Neill, power play. Asia O'Neill back in the conversation. Aaron Campbell alongside Despina Barton. You're watching Big 12 Volleyball. Saturday afternoon, a finale here in Orlando. Coach Mauer's squad closing out their Big 12 calendar, at least on the home slate. They still got a traveling trip to Iowa State in Kansas. Meanwhile, Texas on the other end will go home and host Texas Tech for their finale. 
And the Longhorns have, ever, have already secured their seventh straight Big 12 Volleyball Championship. The Knights wanting to play some extra volleyball here in Orlando. Swindle to O'Neal just off her mark. But that was scary, Aaron. Yeah, it's such a great setup by Emily Wilson on the outside to force that ball out of bounds. I mean, Asia O'Neal thought she had that line. Drop that left shoulder, right? You've got to keep that one nice and high if you want to make that line shot. But, oh, that ball might have been out. Good play. Longhorns keep West. playing. Skinner sends it over. Laying out was Chloe Shear and no one there to clean it up. That was a hard fought point for the Longhorns. Who's excited about that play is Eric Sullivan, assistant coach, excuse me, associate head coach, technical coordinator. So much energy on the bench for Texas. I mean, just the volleyball knowledge on the bench from the coaching staff is incredible. Grimes stays with the ball. Shomers to Wilson. Good hands there. Emma Halter. Swindle has options. And again, out of the pipe. Wilson and the Knights try to do something with it. Swindle's going to dump it. You felt it there. Armor lays out. Swindle outside. Winnis. Delivering some power. Exclamation point there on that series. And it's just relentless defense, right? How frustrating it is as a hitter as you cream a ball like that. And then you're trying to make something else work. Okay, I have to go away from power. And then UCF playing defense and just getting in there, hanging in there, making the play. And of course, it's going to come off the hands of Emily Wilson. Done a phenomenal job for this team on the outside. There on the slide. Look too easy. Swindle and O'Neill teaming up. One of the things Jenny Maurer was so excited about, despite not being able to convert that play, was seeing Ava Armour, her 6'5 freshman, when she was recruiting her, just be able to play defense and lay out. There's no fear. There's no, well, I'm too tall for that. I don't play defense. It's, it's just this really good comfortability in that backcourt. With the layout, ball out of bounds. Knights want to touch, they get it. Good job by Clark coming off the net, didn't even land and was calling the touch on that ball. No argument from Jared Elliott on that one. Hanging in there as UCF, streaming some points together. Minutes, the pass and back row from Wilson, she'll get it right back. Laying out Holter. And it only continues. Clark outside, but it is touched. And it's dig location, right? When the ball is where Shomers can set the ball, she can give Clark the tempo she likes, right? She can give it to her a little faster. Not the tallest player on the court, so you want to be able to give her some tempo to work from. And when the pass is there, she can do it. Little feed. Nearly a pancake on the other side. Point goes down for Bella Bergmark, who we haven't called her name since the first set. Texas really staying away, I mean, have stayed relatively away from their pins, really pushing the ball, forcing the ball on the outsides, making sure they get those contacts. But it's been a great job by the service line of UCF to kind of force that as well. Mark. Swing. Right side attack there by Winnis. Armor through the block and a successful recipe here for the Knights. Love this back row, Bick, with you have Armor and you have Wilson in the back row. Two back row options to bail you out if you need it. Armor now in the front row. Swindle, Winnis. Ah, and in the net. What'd you see there, Aaron? Yeah, in the net. And it's, it's Ava Armour, like, I want to block Skinner so bad. Gets the touch, but uh, loses it foundationally a little bit. So Jenna Winnis, the six foot one junior outside from Frisco, Texas, serving it up. Shomers goes middle to Hanson. I swear, it's only going one direction, and that's straight down. And there's a difference between her being in front of that ball and the, some of the misconnections we've seen with her and Shomers. 
it's like an inch or two different. She needs to be in front of the ball. She needs to be led with that set. But just when they have that right, when that chemistry is right, it is just beautiful to watch. Winnis up to Skinner, block there. Longhorns go back at it. Wilson, Skinner there with the pass. It's a back, she'll load up. Ball stays high, can be tracked. Knights do that. Skinner placing Grimes laying right. out. <laughs> oh my gosh. Holter wow. saving the play on the Holter. other end. The Liberos and DS is doing some dirty Incredible. work. Incredible. The Knights went out the point. And that just made this whole place come alive. Bronze and black and gold. Because they're seeing some amazing defense all over the court right now. Great rally from both sides. Halter just absolutely laying her body out to make that play last longer. And give credit to Grimes who just absolutely got gritty and dug that ball. We need a camera just in the back row, Aaron. Oh I want to see every move, every save, every dig. And to see it from that angle, you can actually understand the speed at which that ball's coming, right? When you when you see it from our perspective, it doesn't have the same kind of feel. But when you're behind and you're making that read, it's all about how... I'm sorry, that ball came right at me. I wasn't ready for it. But how, how quickly that ball comes off the hands and that top spin is the thing that makes it so tricky. So getting that perspective would be so cool. All right, so producers and UCF broadcast team back yeah. in the booth. That's a request for next season. <laughs> oh, everybody take a note of Abby Hansen. The senior delivery, a critical point here on her way out of the rotation. And it's, the, it's just the deviation from the one. It's like the change again in where the ball is set along the net. Force Asia O'Neill to move. And when you do that, you're going to create some seams. So Annika Sokol making her first appearance in this game. An overserve. Actually went off the shoe of the, the line judge there in the corner. So very close to the mark I imagine she was trying to hit. I'm trying to get Sheer to not serve. So Sokol coming in as a serving specialist there. The 5'9 junior libero now coming in to do her due diligence from the service line. Middle oh. attack again. Knight shifting. Off the block, Wilson just relentless. We talked about this place coming alive. I was just received a notification from Eric Lopez, who, if you've been watching all season, Notified me today that the attendance is 1,787. Record crowd breaking the FGCU NCAA record of 1,774. So we told you this place is rocking. We weren't kidding. Scanner. Oh, close. Back Sheer. here Protect for the maker. tea party. Just, I mean, the speed that Sheer just had to get her hands up. To, to try to make some kind of play on that ball. That ball is coming off so fast. I just want to make sure Skinner's on my, like, dodgeball team. You know, when she goes into retirement 10 years from now or something, <laughs> I want her on my team. So one-point game, set number three. It's a must-win for UCF to keep playing here on this Saturday. Oh, Wilson okay. overserves. On, <laughs> A lot of self-inflicted wounds here. Both sides. <laughs> Says something came in her sweat in her eye. So now Asia O'Neill, the six foot three senior from South Lake, Texas, at the service line. Clean serve. Great pass. At the net, dump comes down right on time. Abby Schomers. And it's a great pass by Clark. I mean, Schomers has done it kind of trickily in other situations, but I love that it's done on the perfect pass, right? Expecting that the ball's gonna go to the pins or run a perfect uh, a tempo set with Hanson. Winnis, block is there. Longhorns reset her up, pushing over with the left. 
Armour out of the back row, the put down. The fans don't like that, but Jenna Winnis winning out. Big block. Name Armour almost covered herself there. Trying to make the play, but I mean, Texas has one of the best blocks in the country for a reason. They're just so good at making the read. Hanson off the slide, off the block point. Nice. And even with that set being a little bit low, it's that volleyball IQ to make the adjustment and swing super fast, right? That ball's going to die. You don't have the full arm swing, but in order to make the play continue, you've just got to get up there and take the rip. And that's what you want, again, out of a senior, somebody that leads this team, making those midpoint adjustments. And what a little snafu here. Swindle goes up for the set, watches the ball drop on the other side, and Clark, too, everybody stunted. Ball setter, ball hitter, right? You have to be able to track that every single step of the way. So UCF taking their second timeout here in set number three. They trail by two. Texas has a chance to close the door and start their weekend plans early. Abby Hansen has done a phenomenal job tonight being a leader, but also being an executioner, right? Every time they've given her the ball, she's been making magic, making something work. Five kills at the right time. You know, you think about it's not a high number, but it's just been where it needs to be. And UCF, not a characteristically high blocking team, but Abby Hansen with six total blocks tonight, really slowing down that offense and making one of the best offenses in the country. Think about what they're doing in those front three positions. So the Knights in front of a sellout here on senior night. Record crowd inside the venue have a tall task in front of them. They trail by two here and a must win set number three against the number five team in the nation. And there is a serious look of determination on somebody like Abby Hansen who's smiling, having fun. There is a laser focus right now in number nine. So Jenna Winnis from Frisco, Texas, the junior outside. Gets us going after the timeout. Clark waits for it. Setting up, ready to swing. And man, it's been money for Madison Skinner. And against a team like this, if you're going to tip a roll shot, it has to be effective. It has to be well thought out because with Skinner in the front row, the kill percentage is basically 90%, right? Make them be do something really tricky, not just give the ball to one of the best players in the country. Armour batted away and out of bounds, so the Knights will get the ball back here. Hang on by the hair on their chinny chin chins. And Grimes has had a great stance at the service line. Two service aces here tonight. He's had She's had some tricky ones. Swindle back oh, to boy. her <laughs> woman. Skinner. Oh, God. It's just like it's unfair. You know, it's just unfair. No, but the closer. Also, right, but also makes the perfect pass too, right? A lot of times people think, well, I'm just going to serve the player that's in the front row that's in the passing system. She takes ownership. There's a lot of pride in that to go back there and make that play and make that pass. Match point here on the line. Wilson will have a swing at it. Swindle going back to Skinner. The block comes back at him. And that was the determination you were talking about, Aaron. And Ava Armour up there, not letting anything go, making the play, growing in confidence in that specific skill set and will continue to grow as the season continues and as she gets that spring under her belt. All right, and here Coach Maurer is going to stick with Chloe Shear at the service line. That one does get over. Swindle, one choice, one option. Opposite end for Wilson. 
Winner Swindle, last touch Skinner. Eva Armour, off, off the, the hands. Let's go. And Texas has had a few chances to kill it. And Jared Elliott says, I've seen enough. You wonder the strategy there, right, Aaron? Why not smash it away and put it to rest? Yeah, I, I think it's just misconnection on set, right? Like there's just some miscue. They're not, the set isn't there. They're not being able to run the offense like they want. And one thing I will say about Skinner is that she's not gonna swing on a ball that's gonna force her to error, right? She's going to make good plays. And sometimes that means that it's it's not gonna get a kill on that first ball killer in rotation or in, in side out. So she's gonna make the play, keep that rally going. A record crowd here inside the venue. 1,787 of your closest friends, Aaron Campbell. Here to see Texas take on UCF. And the burnt orange is spread throughout the beauty of this Big 12 conference. There's alumni and fans everywhere. UCF volleyball alumni all hanging out. Look at the family that they've created there. McKenna Melville enjoying herself. And these fans that were all just up out of their seats as UCF is putting together a rally here, hoping to stay alive on senior night. Claudia Dillon's mom, she wants some love here. <laughs> we talked, what, Thanksgiving at their house? We're coming, we're coming. Yours too, you guys look fun. <laughs> Aaron Campbell, Despina Barton. It is a match point on the line. Chloe Shear at the service line for UCF. Trying to hang on. Swindle, little off speed. Grimes keeps the ball up and that one does it. Aaron Campbell, and you guessed it. Off the hands of Madison Skinner, the Big 12 conference leader and kills per set. She did her work and then some. It is the Longhorns that sweep the Knights in their first and only meeting in the Big 12. Aaron, your quick parting thoughts of this game. I mean, Texas is who we thought they were. They came in, they played incredible volleyball, were able to be stoic, got themselves out of tough, tough situations. But if you're UCF, super proud of what you've accomplished today. Probably the best volleyball we've seen from them in uh, the longest stretch, right? We've seen them have, you know, five, 10 points of brilliance. They had 22, 23 throughout this whole entire match. I mean, it was just phenomenal volleyball across the board. And that will do it. The Texas Longhorns here as the match summary is on your screen. They will go back riding a three-match win streak and keep on keeping on looking to defend their national championship. Well, the Knights, they head to the road, take on Iowa State, and then Kansas. And then they will wait for Selection Sunday to figure out how their postseason comes into play. For Aaron Campbell and the entire ESPN Plus crew here in Orlando, Florida, the broadcast team for the UCF Knights. We say goodbye and good night. It is Texas that sweeps UCF in three.